Hello everyone. Let's learn today general features and attachments of the hip bone. The hip bone is also called as coxal bone or innominate bone. It's an example of flat and irregular bone. It is forming pelvic girdle and it is morphologically homologous with the scapula. It is formed by fusion of three elements: the ilium, ischium, and pubis. So these three elements they fuse in the acetabulum. and they form entire hip bone now let's see individual parts the hip bone presents upper and lower expanded part and a constricted part in the center the upper expanded part is termed as ilium whereas in the lower expanded part there is a triangular or oval foramen which is termed as obturator foramen and the part anterior to it is the pubis and the part posterior inferior to it is the ischium now on the lateral aspect there is a cup shaped depression which is termed as acetabulum which will articulate with head of the femur to form hip joint now let's see first ilium it projects upward from the acetabulum as an expanded fan shaped bony plate this is a flat bone and it has got two ends upper end and lower end it has got three borders anterior border posterior border and medial border and it has got three surfaces the iliac fossa the gluteal surface and the sacro pelvic surface now let's study ends of the ilium it has got upper end and lower end the upper end is represented by a curved and thickened border you can see over here it is termed as iliac crest it is concave or convex now if you see it from above so you can see a sinusly curved iliac crest and it is convex outside in ventral to third and in dorsal one third it is convex inside the anterior and posterior ends of iliac crest are termed as anterior superior iliac spine and posterior superior iliac spine respectively so the iliac crest extends from anterior superior iliac spine to the posterior superior iliac spine the anterior superior iliac spine provides attachment to lateral end of inguinal ligament and sartorius muscle whereas the posterior superior iliac spine provides attachment to sacro tuberous ligament now the iliac crest is divided into ventral segment which is anterior 2/3 and dorsal segment which is posterior 1/3 now the ventral segment has got an outer lip an intermediate area and an inner lip now let's see outer lip of the iliac crest approximately 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine it bears a tubercle and this is termed as tubercle of iliac crest now let's see the attachments from outside to inside the outer lip provides attachment to fascia lata and iliotibial tract throughout the course whereas tensor fascia lata is attached just in front of the tubercle of iliac crest in this region medial to that the anterior 2/3 provides attachment to external oblique abdominis muscle now if you see the upward convexity the highest point of the iliac crest is situated just behind the midline over here and in relation to that highest point just behind the highest point the outer lip provides attachment to latissimus dorsi this region now the intermediate rough area throughout the extent provides attachment to internal oblique abdominis muscle now let's see inner lip of the iliac crest in its ventral 2/3 the inner lip provides attachment to transversus abdominis muscle over here in this region and in the dorsal 1/3 in the posterior 1/3 it provides attachment to quadratus lumborum muscle so if we summarize overall muscular attachment along the ventral segment of the iliac crest from outside to inside it provides attachment to tensor fascia lata external oblique abdominis 
latissimus dorsi, the internal oblique abdominis, transversus abdominis, and quadratus lumborum. Now the dorsal segment, it is subdivided by a ridge, you can see over here, into outer and inner slopes. You can clearly appreciate this is outer slope and this is inner slope. It is subdivided by a ridge. Now this outer sloping surface, it provides origin to gluteus maximus muscle. Whereas this inner sloping surface provides origin to erector spiny muscle. Now let's see lower end of the ilium. As you know it fuses with ischium and pubis and together these three they form acetabulum. So upper two fifth of the acetabulum is contributed by ilium, postero inferior two fifth by ischium and entero inferior one fifth by pubis. Now let's see borders of the ilium. It is having three borders, anterior border, posterior border and medial border. Now let's see anterior border. It extends from anterior superior iliac spine to the acetabulum. Now just below the anterior superior iliac spine, it bears a notch, you can see over here. And below that notch, it forms a bulge, which is situated below the anterior superior iliac spine. So this is termed as anterior inferior iliac spine. And it provides attachment to iliofemoral ligament, which extends from anterior inferior iliac spine to the intertrochanteric line of the femur. It is also called as ligament of Bigelow, which is one of the strongest ligament. And in addition to that, it also provides attachment to straight head of rectus femoris. Now let's see posterior border of the ilium. Again, it extends from posterior superior iliac spine. And below it is continuous as posterior border of ischium. So there is a continuous line between ilium and ischium that is posterior border. Now again below posterior superior iliac spine there is a notch and beyond the notch there is another bulge which is termed as posterior inferior iliac spine. Now beyond that spine the posterior border is forming a notch. Now this notch is termed as greater sciatic notch. Beyond to that it forms a bony spicule which is bit broken over here. It is termed as ischial spine and beyond that there is another notch which is termed as lesser sciatic notch. This one is greater, this one is lesser. So the greater sciatic notch actually it is a contribution from ilium above and ischium below. Now let's see medial border. It extends at the junction of ventral and dorsal segment of the iliac crest. It runs downward, forward and medially and it forms a rough area along with the fusion of superior ramus of pubis. This is body of pubis, this is its superior ramus, this is inferior ramus. So the superior ramus of pubis will fuse with the ilium along the medial border and line of fusion is observed as a rough area which is termed as iliopubic eminence. Now let's see surfaces of the ilium. As you know there are three surfaces, anteromedially oriented iliac fossa, posteromedially oriented sacro-pelvic surface and laterally oriented concavo-convex gluteal surface. Now let's see first the iliac fossa. As the name suggests it is a depression situated anteromedially below the iliac crest and it is bounded in front by anterior border and behind by medial border. So this is iliac fossa and in upper two-third this portion provides origin to iliacus muscle. Now let's see second surface it is named as sacro-pelvic surface as it is divided into upper sacral part and lower pelvic part it is limited in front by medial border and behind by posterior border. So this is sacro-pelvic surface. Now let's see first the sacral part of it. It extends from this dorsal segment of iliac crest and it is having an L-shaped articular surface. You can see over here. 
Now this L shaped particular surface it is smooth it is also called as auricular surface because it looks like auricle the outline is like auricle or pinna and this is articulating with its counterpart on the lateral surface of the sacrum you can see over here there is a similar L shaped smooth articular surface now these two together they form plane variety of synovial joint like this which is termed as sacroiliac joint now this joint transmits weight from axial skeleton to the appendicular skeleton so as it transmits weight the mobility is limited but stability is maximum now the stability is provided by attachment of certain ligaments and ligaments are mainly attached to the posterior part of this sacral surface which is rough over here you can see behind this auricular surface there is a rough area and this rough area is termed as iliac tuberosity now this is the roughness is because of attachment of the ligaments so there are mainly three ligaments attached to this iliac tuberosity from behind forward the posterior most ligament is iliolumbar ligament next is dorsal sacroiliac ligament and still in front over here there is attachment of interosseous sacroiliac ligament now pelvic part of the sacropelvic surface is continuous beyond this auricular surface over here you can see and it is continuous with pelvic surfaces of ischium and pubis so together the pelvic surfaces of these three bones they form boundary of true pelvis so over here will be true pelvis if i join both the hip bones like this and posteriorly if we join sacrum so in this territory there will be formation of true pelvis now we know this is greater sciatic notch and between greater sciatic notch and margin of auricular surface over here the pelvic surface bears a sulcus which is situated just in front of this auricular surface so as the name given to it is pre auricular sulcus now the pre auricular sulcus is more conspicuous in case of parous female just because this sulcus is providing attachment to ventral sacroiliac ligament which gets stretched during pregnancy now between pre auricular sulcus and upper margin of greater sciatic notch this portion of pelvic surface provides attachment to few slips of pyriformis whereas in case of lower part the pelvic surface provides attachment to obturator internus muscle now let's see third surface which is the gluteal surface it is situated laterally it is concave or convex you can see over here it is rough and it extends from iliac crest above to the acetabulum below beyond acetabulum behind acetabulum it is continuous as posterior surface of the ischium in front it is bounded by anterior border and behind it is bounded by posterior border so this is rough concave or convex gluteal surface as it provides origin to gluteal muscle the name given to it now the gluteal surface is further subdivided into four areas by three gluteal lines namely posterior anterior and inferior gluteal line now posterior gluteal line you can see over here it starts approximately 5 cm in front of posterior superior iliac spine from iliac crest it runs downward and backward to reach just in front of posterior inferior iliac spine in upper part it is conspicuous in lower part it fades away so this is posterior gluteal line the second is anterior gluteal line which is longest and it is ill defined but it commences from the midpoint of the upper border of greater sciatic notch this is greater sciatic notch this is upper upper border this is lower border so anterior gluteal line starts from its midpoint of upper border and it runs forward and laterally to reach to the iliac crest just in front of the iliac tubercle over here
and third is inferior gluteal line it commences from the apex of greater sciatic notch it runs downward and forward to reach to the anterior inferior iliac spine so here will be inferior gluteal line over here will be anterior gluteal line and over here will be posterior gluteal line so four areas are formed between these three gluteal line the portion of gluteal surface behind the posterior gluteal line this portion provides origin to gluteus maximus the portion between posterior and anterior gluteal line this portion provides origin to gluteus medius and portion of gluteal surface between anterior and inferior gluteal line this portion provides origin to gluteus minimus and below inferior gluteal line up to margin of acetabulum there is a rough area and this portion provides origin to reflected head of rectus femoris so straight head takes origin from anterior inferior iliac spine and reflected head takes origin from the gluteal surface below inferior gluteal line so if you summarize the attachment on the gluteal surface from behind forward it provides origin to gluteus maximus medius minimus and reflected head of rectus femoris now let's study ischium ischium is a thick postero inferior part of the hip bone and it is made up of a body and a ramus like ilium the body is having upper end and lower end plus three borders anterior border posterior border and lateral border and in between these three borders there are three surfaces femoral surface dorsal surface and pelvic surface now let's see upper end the upper end is fused with ilium and pubis to form acetabulum and as we have discussed postero inferior two fifth of the acetabulum this portion is contributed by upper end of the ischium now let's see the lower end the lower end forms a thick coma shaped ischial tuberosity you can see over here and the entire ischial tuberosity it is providing attachment to the muscles which is further subdivided by a horizontal ridge into upper and lower areas the upper area is further subdivided by an oblique ridge you can see over here into supralateral area and inframedial area the supralateral area this portion provides origin to semi membranosus muscle whereas this inframedial area it provides attachment to long head of biceps femoris and semi tendinosus muscle the lower area below that horizontal ridge is further subdivided by a vertical ridge into medial and lateral areas the lateral area provides origin to ischial head of adductor magnus whereas this medial area it is subcutaneous and it is covered with fibro fatty tissue now this portion is helping in weight transmission from hip bone to the surface in sitting position the medial margin of this ischial tuberosity which is rough you can see over here let me bring it closer this medial margin provides attachment to sacrotuberous ligament now let's study borders as i mentioned it has got three borders number 1 is anterior border now this is forming part of boundary of obturator foramen and it is providing attachment to obturator membrane the second border is posterior border as we have discussed the posterior border of ilium from posterior superior iliac spine to posterior inferior iliac spine and then it is continuous as greater sciatic notch then it forms ischial spine lesser sciatic notch and up to ischial tuberosity so this is the posterior border which is a continuation of posterior border of ilium and here it forms greater sciatic notch along with the posterior border of ilium beyond that it forms ischial spine which is broken the tip of the ischial spine provides attachment to sacrospinous ligament 
which converts greater sciatic notch into greater sciatic foramen like this and the pelvic surface of facial spine provides attachment to coccygeus and levoderanai muscle which will form pelvic diaphragm the upper and lower margins of the lesser sciatic notch they provide origin to superior and inferior gemellus muscle respectively the lesser sciatic notch is covered by fibrocartilage in living and that prevents friction between tendon of obturator internus and the bone now let me explain the same in diagram this is right hip bone its posterior aspect with sacrum and femur so what you can see is here will be greater sciatic notch ischial spine lesser sciatic notch and ischial tuberosity so greater sciatic notch is filled with tendon of piriformis whereas lesser sciatic notch above and below it provides attachment to gemellus superior and gemellus inferior in between these two there runs tendon of obturator internus so you can see over here it takes origin from the pelvic surfaces of ilium ischium and pubis it covers the obturator foramen and then the tendon reaches to the lesser sciatic notch where it turns abruptly towards greater trochanter of the femur so superior and inferior gemellus will run above and below respectively with the tendon of obturator internus and they prevent friction during movement of obturator internus now the dorsal surface of ischial spine it is related to three structures from lateral to medial namely pudendal nerve internal pudendal vessels and now to obturator internus now these three structures they emerge out from greater sciatic notch below the lower border of piriformis you know so many other structures also come out and they are seen in the gluteal region now these three structures they are also coming out from greater sciatic notch and they are temporarily seen in gluteal region in relation to the dorsal surface of ischial spine now these three structures again they will enter into the pelvis through this lesser sciatic notch now by sacro tuberous ligament this lesser sciatic notch is again converted into lesser sciatic foramen and out of these three structures the pudendal nerve and internal pudendal vessels they enter inside the pelvis and then they are found in the pudendal canal which will be found somewhere over here it is situated approximately 1 inch above the ischial tuberosity so from greater sciatic notch or foramen to the gluteal surface and back to the pelvis these two structures will then found in the pudendal canal whereas now to obturator internus that will end by supplying obturator internus which will be seen somewhere over here let me explain the same in the diagram this is right hip bone and what you can see is the greater sciatic notch ischial spine lesser sciatic notch ischial tuberosity and these three structures the pudendal now root value s3 s3 and s4 the internal pudendal vessels and now to obturator internus they remain on the dorsal aspect of the ischial spine and then they enter in the pelvic cavity through lesser sciatic foramen and the now to obturator internus will supply that muscle whereas internal pudendal vessels and pudendal now will enter into the pudendal canal so here will be the pudendal canal in relation to the ischial tuberosity and that is observed in lateral wall of ischiorectal fossa so you can remember a mnemonic for these three structures lateral to medial P I N P stands for pudendal now I stands for internal pudendal vessels and N stands for now to obturator internus now third border is lateral border you can see over here it is forming lateral margin of ischial tuberosity and in upper part it starts from the acetabulum so initially there is a notch and then it is continuous as lateral margin of the ischial tuberosity now this notch in living it is lodged by tendon of obturator externus basically obturator externus is taking origin from this portion and then the tendon will lodge in this notch and finally it is attached to the greater trochanter of the femur now let's see surfaces as i mentioned it has got three surfaces femoral surface dorsal surface and pelvic surface now the femoral surface is situated between anterior border over here and lateral border so this is femoral surface which is continuous with the outer surface of conjoint ischiobibic rami now close to the margin of obturator foramen over here this portion provides origin to obturator externus 
and close to the lateral border next to the ischial tuberosity. This portion of femoral surface provides origin to quadratus femoris muscle. Now next is dorsal surface. As you know the dorsal surface is a continuation of gluteal surface of the ilium and this dorsal surface itself is subdivided by a groove into upper and lower areas. Now in living this groove is lodged by tendon of obturator internus and two gemelli. Now third surface is pelvic surface. As you know pelvic surface is of ilium pubis and ischium together they form wall of true pelvis or lesser pelvis and along the margin of obturator foramen this portion as well as pelvic surface of ischium they provide origin to obturator internus. Now the ramus of the ischium it starts from lower part of the body and it runs upward and medially and it fuses with the inferior ramus of pubis together these form conjoint ischio pubic ramus now the conjoint ischio pubic ramus has got upper border lower border outer surface and inner surface the upper border forms part of obturator foramen and that provides attachment to obturator membrane whereas lower border it is forming part of subpubic angle let me join both so if we join both the pubis like this so the lower waters of conjoint ischiopubic rami they form part of subpubic angle and specifically in case of male here you can see this lower border is everted and it is because it provides attachment to crust of panis the outer surface is concave you can see over here and it provides origin to four muscles from above downward namely obturator externus over here adductor magnus that is adductor head the adductor bravis and gracilis so let me explain the same in diagram uh, this is right hip bone and what you can see is this is right conjoint ischiopubic rami showing its outer surface now let's see the attachment of the muscles from above downward in relation to the margin of obturator foramen there is origin of obturator externus Next will be origin of adductor magnus. This is the adductor head which is continuous with the ischial head from ischial tuberosity. The next will be adductor brevis and gracilis. So these many muscles are taking origin from outer surface of the conjoint ischiopubic rami. Now the inner surface it is convex and it is subdivided into three areas upper, middle and lower by two faint ridges which are not clearly seen over here. But there are two faint ridges and they divide the inner surface into three areas upper middle and lower the upper ridge provides attachment to superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm whereas the lower ridge provides attachment to inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm or perineal membrane so over here in the middle portion of or middle area of the conjoint ischiopubic ramus there is attachment of entire urogenital diaphragm you know the urogenital diaphragm is between superior fascia and perineal membrane so there are three parts now upper middle and lower part by these two ridges now the upper area provides origin to obturator internus muscle the middle area below the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm that provides origin to two muscle deep transverse perineal muscle and spinter urethra. Now the lower area below the perineal membrane it provides origin to crus pannis or crus clitoridis, ischio cavernosus muscle and superficial transverse perineal muscle. So if we revise the structures attached to the inner aspect of conjoint ischiopubic rami from above downward the structures are obturator membrane to the upper border then beyond that obturator internus superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm, spinter urethra and deep transverse perineal muscle, the inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm or perineal membrane, the crust pannis or crust clitoridis, ischio cavernosus muscle, superficial transverse perineal muscle and to the lower border, crust of pannis, fascia lata of thigh and fascia of collis of perineum. Now let's see pubis. The pubis is made up of body, a superior ramus and inferior ramus.
the inferior ramus joins with the ramus of ischium to form conjoint ischiopubic ramus now pubis is also called as os pubis or pubic bone and it contributes antero inferior one fifth of acetabulum now let's see body of pubis the body of pubis has got three surfaces number one pelvic surface this is symphysal surface or medial surface and this one is anterior surface or femoral surface in addition to that it has got a lateral border over here and that forms part of boundary of obturator foramen as well as in upper part it has got a pubic crest and lateral to pubic crest there is a pubic tubercle now first is femoral surface if you hold the hip bone in anatomical position the direction of femoral surface is downward forward and laterally and there are four muscles taking origin from it number one is adductor longus now adductor longus takes origin as a rounded tendon from a depression which is situated at the junction of pubic crest and symphysal surface somewhere over here and it is said that in professional riders there develops a sesamoid bone in the tendon of it and that bone is termed as rider's bone now below that origin three muscles they take origin from medial to lateral number one is gracilis and the origin extends to the outer surface of conjoint ischiopubic rami next to it will be and still next lateral most in relation to the margin of obturator foramen over here will be origin of obturator externus so let me explain the same this is right hip bone and here will be the body of pubis so at the junction of pubic crest and symphysal surface there is a depressed area which is providing origin to adductor longus and below three muscles the outermost will be the gracilis then deep to that in line to the adductor longus will be adductor brevis and still deep inside in relation to the obturator foramen there is origin of obturator externus so this portion belongs to the body of pubis now posterior surface or pelvic surface it is in relation with the corresponding surfaces of the superior and inferior ramus and ischium and ilium and together these surfaces are forming wall of true pelvis or lesser pelvis now direction of the pelvic surface is backward and upward and behind to that it is related to urinary bladder between urinary bladder and this pelvic surface there forms a retropubic space which is filled by fibrofatty tissue and venous plexus now close to the center of this surface here it provides attachment to anterior most fibers of levator ani and next to it this portion provides origin to obturator internus now medial surface or symphysal surface it is covered by articular cartilage and corresponding surfaces are related to it and they are having a fibrocartilaginous disc in between together these two are forming symphysis pubis or pubic symphysis let me join both like this so this is how the pubic symphysis is formed it is also called as secondary cartilaginous joint and the purpose of this joint is it is behaving as a shock absorber and it is absorbing the medial thrust given from the hip joint via femur now pubic crest is a thickened upper border of the body of pubis and lateral to that pubic crest there is an elevated area this is termed as pubic tubercle so in body in upper part we get two important landmark pubic crest which extends from pubic symphysis laterally and lateral end is bulging as pubic tubercle now let's see attachment on the pubic crest from before backward number one is fascia lata then comes anterior wall of rectus sheath then third comes origin of lateral head of rectus abdominis you know it has having two heads medial and lateral head so the lateral head takes origin from this pubic crest and in addition to that whenever there is presence of pyramidalis that will be taking origin just in front of the lateral head of rectus abdominis number 4 is conjoint tendon that is a tendon which is formed by fusion of fibers of transversus abdominis and oblique abdominis and number 5 is fascia transversalis so these many structures are attached to pubic crest from before backward next comes pubic tubercle it also provides attachment to various structures like first is the medial end of inguinal ligament now we know lateral end of inguinal ligament is attached to the anterior superior iliac spine 
so here there will be attachment of medial end of inguinal ligament in addition to that it also provides attachment to lateral cross of superficial inguinal ring now superficial inguinal ring is a triangular gap in the aponeurosis of external oblique in addition to that it also provides attachment to apex of lacunal ligament which is one of the reflection from the inguinal ligament and in addition to that it provides attachment to reflected part of inguinal ligament and ascending limb of u shaped loops of cramaster muscle so these many muscles or uh, these many structures are attached to pubic tubercle now next is superior ramus of the pubis which arises from suprolateral angle of the body you can see over here and it extends up to iliopubic eminence where it merges with the ilium now in cross section it is triangular in shape and it bears three borders and three surfaces the borders are posterior or pectineal line anterior it is also called as obturator crest and inferior again i am repeating posterior or pectineal line anterior or obturator crest and inferior and in between these three borders there are three surfaces number 1 is pectineal surface number 2 is pelvic surface which is continuous with the pelvic surface of body and third one is inferior surface or obturator surface now let's see first the pectineal line or posterior border it is also called as pectern pubis it extends laterally as a sharp line beyond pubic tubercle to the posterior part of iliopubic eminence this entire junction between ilium and pubis is iliopubic eminence so up to this point the pectern pubis extends and beyond that it is continuous as an arcuate line or it is a continuation of medial border of the ilium now let's see attachment on the pectern pubis so medially it provides attachment to multiple structures from before backward like first comes the lacuna ligament it is a reflection of inguinal ligament next is reflected part of inguinal ligament number 3 is conjoint tendon and number 4 is fascia transversalis now again lateral part provides attachment to another structures and they are arranged from before backward like pectineal ligament or it is also called as ligament of cooper then comes part of pectineus muscle it is covered by pectineus fascia and number 4 is psoas whenever it is present it is situated over here now second border is anterior border or obturator crest it extends from pubic tubercle over here to the margin of acetabulum or acetabular notch this is a notch in the acetabulum so up to this point the anterior border or obturator crest is situated now third is inferior border it forms upper margin of obturator foramen and it provides attachment to obturator membrane leaving a gap laterally and that forms obturator canal that allows passage of obturator nerve and vessels so there is a gap in the obturator membrane which is situated in relation to this lateral part of inferior border of superior ramus over here now let's see surfaces as you know there are three surfaces the pectineal surface pelvic surface and obturator surface so first is the pectineal surface which is situated between pectern pubis and obturator crest it's a triangular area and in upper part over here it provides attachment to pectineus muscle second surface is pelvic surface which extends between pectern pubis and inferior border and it is continuous with pelvic surfaces of body of pubis and ilium and it is covered by peritoneum and subperitoneally there crosses obliterated umbilical artery now third surface is obturator surface which is situated between inferior border and obturator crest and it is having a groove and that groove is converted into obturator canal which lodges obturator nerve and vessels now next is inferior ramus of the pubis it extends downward and laterally beyond body of pubis and it merges with the corresponding ramus of ischium together they form conjoint ischio pubic ramus and that we already discussed now antero inferior to the acetabulum there is a triangular foramen this is termed as obturator foramen it is situated between ischium and pubis and 
it is oval and larger in case of males whereas it is smaller and triangular in case of female now the margin of obturator foramen is providing attachment to obturator membrane leaving a gap supralaterally which is converted into an obturator canal and you know obturator nerve and vessels are lodged into it now let's see acetabulum the acetabulum is a large cup shaped depression which is situated on the outer side of middle constricted area and direction of acetabulum is forward downward and laterally and it is forming socket for the head of the femur to form hip joint now you know acetabulum is contributed by all three elements of hip bone upper two fifth by ilium postero inferior two fifth by ischium and antero inferior one fifth by pubis now the acetabulum is having a horseshoe shaped smooth articular surface you can see over here and this is termed as lunate surface which is covered by hyaline cartilage and that is the actual articular surface for the hip joint now in the center there is a depression this is termed as acetabular fossa which is covered by fat antero inferiorly there is a gap in the acetabulum this is termed as acetabular notch and this notch is bridged by a ligament that is termed as transverse acetabular ligament so that completes the acetabular margin leaving a gap and that is termed as acetabular foramen through this foramen from outside branches of obturator artery and medial circumflex femoral artery they enter inside and they supply the hip joint now margin of acetabulum will provide attachment to a fibrocartilaginous rim which is termed as acetabular labrum it increases the depth and stability of the hip joint a similar fibrocartilaginous rim we find around the glenoid cavity which is termed as glenoid labrum now two ends of the acetabular notch in addition to providing attachment to transverse acetabular ligament they also provide attachment to base of a triangular shaped ligament that is termed as round ligament of head of femur or it is also termed as ligamentum teres femoris the lateral end of it is attached to the fovea capitis which is situated in the head of the femur so there is attachment of ligamentum teres femoris now in our body two other ligaments are named similar like this number one is ligamentum teres uteri that is the round ligament of the uterus and number two is ligamentum teres hepatis which is attached to the under surface of the liver within the fissure for ligamentum teres now let's see certain important features regarding hip bone the ilium represents dorsal component whereas the pubis and ischium they represent ventral component so the muscles attached to the ilium or the dorsal component they are supplied by dorsal division of lumbar or sacral plexus whereas the muscles attached to the pubis or ischium including all the hamstrings they are supplied by ventral division of lumbar or sacral plexus now let's see certain important vertebral levels in relation to the iliac crest number 1 is highest point of the iliac crest which is situated slightly behind the midpoint of anterior superior iliac spine and posterior superior iliac spine somewhere over here and if we draw an imaginary horizontal plane passing through the highest points of both the iliac crest that plane is termed as supracrestal plane the approximate level is between l3 and l4 vertebrae now next is vertebral level of posterior superior iliac spine it is over here and if you draw an imaginary line horizontal line which is touching both the posterior superior iliac spine in the midline it will pass somewhere in relation to spine of s2 and you know lower border of s2 it is a limit or lower limit of subarachnoid space the dura and arachnoid they terminate over here so it is very important landmark in giving spinal anesthesia now in relation to the posterior superior iliac spine the soft tissue shows a dimple so that is again an important soft tissue landmark now third is a plane passing through tubercle of ilium you know tubercle of ilium is situated 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine on the outer lip of iliac crest and if you draw an imaginary line passing through the tubercles of ilium that plane is termed as intertubercular plane or transtubercular plane 
which is passing just above the body of L5 vertebrae. So that is about general features and attachments on the hip bone. Hope you have understood well. Thanks for watching.